Baseball. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh, oh hey. Hey. It's sure. Alex and Jim, episode 97. Close. I would hope I'd be close. <laughs> True. 98. It's 98. 98. Yes. I forgot I'm within five. Yeah. Yeah. It's episode uh, 43. Oh, boy, you're you're off a bit. <laughs> it's the congestion. Yeah. 98. Uh, Alex and Jim. Yep. We analyze Billy Joel and the lyrics. And he's such a fan of this show. He loves our show so much that he was like, I guess I got to write a new song. Like they're running out of songs and uh, they get to the end. God yeah. only knows what happened. I think he doesn't want us to get to We Didn't Start the Fire. <laughs> He's still embarrassed. I managed to pick something for sure that we haven't done, but I want to share some magic with you. <laughs> <laughs> I like magic. So recently I uploaded the episode about surprises. Right. Great. That's one of the more, more recent episodes to go live. And I like that episode. We really had a good time talking about that song. And uh, and then I was going through the list of shows. And I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> what? Uh, we did it twice. It's the only one we've done twice, so I guess that's pretty good. What just happened? I didn't even do that. <laughs> uh, it, was it because I did this? Surprises. Wow. Well, I can't believe we've been here for 98 episodes. <laughs> and that's never happened. I Yeah, I didn't turn nothing on either. I didn't... Uh... No, that would be on your end anyway. What else? What else can it do? I wonder. Wow, this is where we get distracted. So, wow, it's absolutely fantastic that uh, we did in fact cover this song before. <laughs> I, you know, I would have assumed that we'd done it at least once, but now that it's, I know it to be true. It's shocking. Yeah. I hope we had a wildly different take. I hope so. Yes, completely contradictory. I hope we hated it. I hope we were mad. <laughs> oh, that's great and stupid. Oh, uh, right? We will not have that problem this week, I promise you. No. Here's how bad we have it later. Oh, yes. Here's how bad my memory is. I'm pretty sure at one time I said, gosh, I'm not even sure if I've heard this song. I'm sure I said that. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, like live casting dementia <laughs> <laughs> as it descends on our lives. Yes. Uh, I, I want to share a joke with you that I thought of this week. And it's a joke for no one. And I, I, it made me laugh picturing doing it live on stage. We've talked about this before, how your writers and you yourself will think of jokes based on old references. And sure. you'll have to put your writer in check and go, nobody knows what that is. And it made me laugh just imagining getting on stage in front of a bunch of normal human beings who aren't 50 plus yeah. And I'm going, what the fuck is he talking about? And it was, but it just made me laugh. And the joke is just, obviously, a lot of us deal with depression. Um, a lot of us deal with sadness. And part of the thing is really, we need to normalize mental health, which is why I'm teaming with a celebrity to create a video series, Dwarf on Grief. <laughs> That's the whole thing. We very specifically had have an ongoing dwarf problem at the show. We tried to somebody tried to put it in the closer look, and oh, Ian, it was the guy who did it is like thirty five, so he has no right. Yeah, 
But then he has an associate producer and a graphics person who work on Closer Look, who are both ladies who are not 30 yet. And so the researcher had to look up what Dorf was and came to the second meeting just furious. Like, that is not possible that people know what this is. Yeah, absolutely. I had to say, like, I think you're right. I don't think it's possible that... I think most people our age don't know what that is. My friend of mine's one note was, he said, if you really wanted it to be funny still for an audience, and, and of course I don't, because no. I'm not ever going to do this on stage. That's I wouldn't waste stage time on this. But he said, if you were, you can't just say it anymore. You'd have to act it out. <laughs> and that I found delightful. I thought, um, like, just imagining going... You forgive the person for yourself, not for them. <laughs> Holding on to a grudge is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Fall over. <laughs> uh, oh, Dorf on grief. I've Dorf on grief. And Lord, I love... There's the no venue uh, or container in show business for that kind of shit. Nope. there And there shouldn't be. Yeah, they probably shouldn't. It wouldn't work. Yeah, or may I don't know. Maybe it's for somebody. I don't know. It's so very weird. We were chatting about the odds. So if you're young, you don't know what Dwarf was. So the great Tim Conway was a comedian. You may not even know who that is. Right. He was very funny, but he needed money. So he did... Okay a direct market comedy thing that you couldn't do anymore, I don't think. I don't think you can. Where he made VHS tapes of this <laughs> comedy series where he played this character, Dorf, who had a Hitler-esque mustache, and he would put his knees in his shoes so he'd look really short, and he had a funny accent that was you know, maybe Scandinavian. Sure, I'm sure it went in and out like crazy. Yes, it was from some nondescript country over wherever. And he would just make these videos and he made money hand over fist for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could do that now. Yeah, there, maybe you can. I mean, now you would do it digitally, I guess in the way that stand-up comics are making their own specials and putting them on YouTube. Sure. Whatever How do you get people to pay for them? How's that work? Yeah, on YouTube, I don't know that you can. You have to create your own website. But I know one of our writers just did this, where he <clears throat> taped a special, cut it together and all that jazz, and it just put it on YouTube. So I'm like, I don't think you get money for that unless the, the viewership goes above a certain number. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe that's the hope. Yeah. Or I guess in for that particular writer, it's obviously there's a value in getting in just, sure. I like the work and whatever, but Lord, yeah. But yeah, I don't know how you monetize, but yeah. that's very true across all digital platforms. And I think yeah. a lot of the platforms don't know how you monetize anything. And that's why all the streaming services fucking stink. I saw an interview with Billy Joel, not to go too bad back on topic, but it was funny. He was asking, what do you think of the music industry today? And he, very old man answer. He goes, well, it doesn't exist. But I don't know how you sell anything to anybody. So my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Great. And it's yeah. pretty, pretty damned accurate. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's pretty accurate. I have a buddy uh, who is the bass player in our band on the show. Our buddy Sid uh, also owns a record label that he manages and he finds new bands all the time. And um, he's, you know, he's also in his 50s. So he's slowly going insane. <laughs> trying to, he's like, I've got this great band in Ireland called Somebody's Child, which I'm like, fucking great name. Yep. And rock out. And it's like, I don't know how to make them famous. <laughs> like, then we can make a record, but then what happens? Like, yeah. Them on TV or on 
Spotify, they have to go on tour with somebody else who's already super famous and that's hard to pull off. He's like, I don't, I have gold in my hands and I don't know how to cash it. Well, let me, so if you want to tell him what Jim thinks, um, <laughs> is it. it can work to make a really good video. Not even, it doesn't even have to be that good. You don't have to spend that much money of them and put it on YouTube and find people to amplify it yes. because people do still explode from YouTube. True. And, and or TikTok, I think, although who nobody listens to a whole fucking song on TikTok, do they? I think, well, see, I, I don't think they do very much, but you don't necessarily need them to. As right. long as it's a, a chunk of the song that contains like a wicked hook in the thing that really draws you in and says, oh, who the fuck is this vocalist? Right. And man, these guys can play. Right. So, yeah. you know, hey, so, if you want... Click the link. Yeah, so if he wants me to run his business... I'll check. Yeah, let him know. I don't know anything about music. Sure. I'm not very dependable. Uh-huh. And, and Not here. No, and over time, I can be irritating. So just... Yeah, yeah. So... And when you say over time... <laughs> how much time are we talking not much. Yeah. You have a <laughs> you do a great thing where you're irritating immediately <laughs> and then you get lovable. <laughs> Which is a good way to go. It's uh people see people catch me different ways because you caught me that way. People sure. catch me the other way where I wasn't irritating right away. I uh <laughs> one of my friends, uh Eric Edwards, is a very nice man, very funny dude i think you know eric edwards not familiar the first time i met him he was on stage and i happened to be after him and i just made fun of him the whole time <laughs> and he recounted years later he's like yeah i felt good and then you got on stage and i went home and i was like ah, that guy kept making fun <laughs> <laughs> And I thought I was hilarious, and I'm, I think I was hilarious, to be honest, but I was also for sure mean. <laughs> for sure. And I didn't. I don't know that I meant to be mean, because I think one of the problems with comics is we spend a lot of time not meaning to be mean. Absolutely. Or not being mean when it's not time yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you haven't known me long enough. <laughs> yeah, I haven't earned this. You don't know I'm kidding. Yeah, that yeah. happened to me at work with uh, like my writers who want to make fun of me. I'm like, hey, you just got here. Yeah. You don't do burns on me. Yeah, no, this is... The host. <laughs> burns go downhill. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, so a couple things about this song that I found before we get, even get into the song, I wanted to get into the fact that apparently lots of songs exist. By Billy Joel that we haven't heard. Oh, very good news. But the clarification, I'm glad I watched the interview because I got excited. There's all this like, but you always fucking hear that. I heard about so many Prince songs that apparently exist. Right. I currently no longer believe that. <laughs> oh, I believe they exist and I believe they're tangled in a legal nightmare. Is that what you think it is? But I think. Okay. Over who oh. owns them, who can uh, sell them. Yeah. Who's the highest bidder? I'm sure there's like family tearing each other apart. Yeah. And even the family is tearing themselves apart, which is a very deep cut joke nobody could enjoy either. Uh, if you remember the short-lived group that Prince produced, The Family. I don't remember that. See, I'm great at this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, when I create that show for nobody, yeah, will be the host. Oh, I'm the perfect host for nobody. God, <laughs> welcome nobody. <laughs> Today, today's guest did not show up, so it's just a long monologue again. <laughs> it keeps happening. So I re I saw this long interview with uh, he was on Colbert. I'm sure you saw that interview recently 
two nights ago. No, I did not see it. Ah, it's worth a watch. It's very entertaining. Um, and he talked to, and apparently there's all these songs that exist, but he clarified that it's the music exists. Ah, uh, yeah. The melodies, different piece. And you, so I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's a different thing. For sure. That's, that's way unfinished. Yeah, that's less than half a song. <laughs> yeah. There's half a chance he has played that in a concert you went to noodling between. Yeah. There's a lot of those. He'll sometimes like play a, a minute of piano music and then be like, anyway, where was I? Yeah. Like that could be a fragment of something. Yeah. So the fact that he got off his ass to write this and obviously was inspired by a young kid who likes him and he likes to be liked, which who doesn't is very cool. So maybe this kid can help him get to the next level. But also one thing he said that made me think, well, he might make an album was he liked that he wrote this song without concern about whether or not it was going to be on the radio or a hit. Yeah. And maybe he's finally clicked into, oh, who gives a fuck what other people think? Yeah. And maybe if, much more interesting stuff. Yeah. If nobody likes this, it does not matter. Yeah. Back where I was. Yeah. And and hold on, I'm going to let my little girl get off the bed. Hold on. Um, and if nobody likes it, I think he's finally realizing he's Billy Joel and what right. that means to other people. I think it's finally sinking in. Yeah, I think you're right. I did see um, a print interview with him where um, he was talking about that young kid who sort of inspired all this stuff and also how he was inspired by the shout out from Olivia Rodrigo and other artists who mention him and bring him up. And he's like, oh, I'm in the ether more than I thought I was. Yeah. I think he really thought like nobody fucking remembers me except 20,000 idiots who come to my concerts. Yeah. It's really everybody. It's it's a funny thing because I would have agreed with his earlier assessment 10 years ago because I think you've had this experience where I find it amusing to let people know I'm a Billy Joel fan because I know they find it funny. Right. Like I do fun of you then. Yeah, I do a bit in my act where I go um I talk about just getting older and and I and one of the jokes I say is I go, as you get older, there's just stuff you got to accept about yourself. Like, for example, I guess I just really like Billy Joel. And it just goes into this whole bit. Right. And, but now I'm like, I, you know what? I fucking think Billy Joel is like, uh, uh, Jim Gaffigan says about McDonald's, which is every, you know, they sell, millions and millions of hamburgers everybody claims they don't go there i think you're all liars yeah yeah definitely some of that and i think uh you know these people are like oh i don't i don't like billy joel and you say oh my god you don't like uh again you'll name a song and then they go oh that's billy joel right fucking dummies you just weren't keeping score yeah yeah that's right you and what you just uh, know you're not supposed to. Yep. You want to be cool as hell. And I also understand the other thing, and because I I have the bit talks about this, but I won't do the bit. But I understand that a lot of his music isn't like a fucking barn burner, right? Where it's not to get you because there's no Billy Joel song that you're like you know what to really ju you know really juice up this party. Uh, <laughs> You know, the, you know, the stranger, I'm going to put on the stranger. The, this party's going to be pumping. He, but he didn't make that kind of music. Oh, I put but, a joke in the closer look the other day because there was a story about George Santos's district, which is like Oyster Bay and Hicksville. <laughs> yeah. And we were just running down Long Island 
And my final burn was like, it's a whole island of people who think you can dance to Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot. Yeah. It's, yeah. The only thing to have it on is if you're just going to sit and listen to it. I don't think I've ever thought about the fact that you can't dance to that. That's a lovely joke. If you did, again, I've said this before, if you did stand up, that'd be a, a lovely bit to do. That'd be your fourth joke in stand up. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a good fucking observation because you could even songs that have parts you could dance to do something unwieldy for dancing. I have weird time signatures because I remember being in like eighth grade at the eighth grade dance and finally getting the courage to dance. And then they would throw a Billy Joel song in or you're at a wedding or something. And you're like, wait, this isn't working. Yeah. You I mean, really have a beat exactly. Yeah. And you, would try. You, could, mm -hmm. you could dance to tell her about it, I think. That's probably about it. Yeah, but it would have to be like Broadway dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. It's just a little, the beats per minute is not right. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's what people are. So I guess it depends because I think you and I listen to music in a very similar way, which is we listen to music. Yeah. Like I that's what we're like doing. Sing along. Yeah. It works for me because he's right in my range. He's not an amazing singer. <laughs> so I sound all right. Yeah. It's great. And now he's got this new song. I want to show you something. I got it in the mail. Oh, yeah. Let's see your prize. Oh, beautiful. Right? Still with Columbia. Great. Very, <laughs> very simple. I bought it direct from BillyJoel.com. And you get, here's what you get as a bonus if you buy vinyl direct from BillyJoel.com. A lot of emails. Oh, nice. Asking you, including, which I've never understood this, asking you, to buy the thing you bought. Oh, sure. Why? What the fuck is that? I don't know, but I get, I mean, the internet does that to you. Right? Right. I'm like, when I'm scrolling around on Instagram and then there suddenly will be an ad that might as well say, you bought this. <laughs> well, you want to see it again? Yeah. I was like, no, I. that's the exact one I have. And the first couple of times, it freaked me out. Because I was like, how did they know? And I'm like, oh, right, I bought it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. The internet knows it. They all know each other there on the internet. The one that really, I, I've told you before, but that's worth saying again, because it's so fucking ridiculous, is when we closed on this house. Yeah. And I would get ads saying, hey, you bought a house. Would you like to buy another house? <laughs> Fuck. You seem to be on a, a run of buying houses. Yeah, I mean, you only get you only bought the one. You clearly, you must be in the market for another one. For the lady, maybe. <laughs> Small house for your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Just absurd. Ah, um, uh, they. I think that was the last one forever. Yeah. Okay. okay good. Um, so he made this song. The music's very pretty. What do you think of the music? I think it's very lovely. Um, it sound. I was trying to figure out like where would it live. Um, and it does sound a lot like something that would be on uh, the River of Dreams. Yeah. Um, some of the I don't know if it's the time signatures or chord progressions. I don't know about music. But where are my balloons? The yeah. balloon? What happened to the balloons? Well, we broke it. Uh, well, wait a minute. But yeah, it didn't sound. You know, surprises. You... Is that what it was? No. You say surprises. Surprises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what's happening <laughs> i think i've been hacked 
Um, what was I talking about? Oh, the time signature that felt oh. like it's in maybe yeah. River of Dreams days. If you weren't a, a Billy Joel fan and listener, you would just be like, this sounds like it's from no time in particular. Or like it's always existed. Um, but as a fan, I was like, oh, no, it fits right on that album. I bet maybe he's had that melody doinking around since about that time. That would make sense with what we know, because we know that he has a lot of music, apparently, that does not have lyrics to it currently. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. If I if I had some music knowledge, I could be more firm about that. But we're not here for knowledge. No. We're I always... Wildly. See, here's what I find interesting about when they write the old piano music. I find this fascinating about... And it's anybody I've ever known. I've known some really good pianists who write their own music. They write a certain thing. They create the melody. And then there does seem to be a part where they're just filling in with piano that just <laughs> feels like, well, I'm sure you wrote this down later, but I'm sure really what you did was you just knew you had to play something. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? I think so, yeah. Is it just fe feels like, okay, this is kind of how the melody went, and now I'm noodling. Oh, this is the right noodling for this. Uh-huh. Right, and, right, right, right. And there's... Parts of this song that are a little bit like that, where he's doing a few piano tricks that actually sound familiar to me as far as like, oh, these are, well, and, and of course they would sound like this. These are Billy Joel piano tricks. Yeah. Yeah. I felt that. Um, it did. It felt very complete. Yeah. Interesting. I was trying to take note of what I thought the very first time I heard it, because I was like, I know I'm going to hear this a hundred thousand times. Let me try to feel what this is like. But all I could do was experience the weird dissonance of hearing a Billy Joel song that I didn't know the words to. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you feel like, oh, am I going crazy? I'm like, this can't be the words. You're right. <laughs> so you start to hate the words and you're like, oh, no. So it, it fell apart pretty quick, my little experiment. <laughs> and I yeah. solved it by listening to it a, a million times. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I know the song. It is jarring because you got very, you know, we all got very comfortable with, yeah, this is a this is the body of work. This is what it is. Yeah. And I was like, that's definitely him singing, but what is he talking about? <laughs> Please open the door. What? I am very happy that it doesn't suck. Yes. I never really worried that it would. I didn't either because I was like, man, that would be impressive in, its, in a weird way if you came out of retirement to suck. That would really be very yeah. strange. 20, 20 years of silence and then like a turd. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that? It's like a sequel to that French song or whatever. <laughs> but... Uh um, and I knew, here's the thing, here's what I would want. And I bet you a lot of Billy Joel fans feel this way. I would love it if he would just deliver his version of a rocker. Yeah. I just would love it. But I don't think that will happen. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know. <clears throat> if he can still rock. I mean, yeah, he can, he can still play the old ones uh, very convincingly. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if his, I feel like he's an old introspective gentleman now. There's maybe less, it's a little less rocky. <laughs> yeah. It would have to be because he was doing something satirical, right? That would get him to feel like doing that. If he did a, a rockin' song about Lipitor or whatever. <laughs> it, and I'm, he would do a rockin' song about how rock isn't good anymore or something. Yes. Like he would do that. I don't like rock anymore. And yeah. About it. Yeah, right. You know, which, by the way, there is something to be said for just going, well, what are they doing? Because if 
you know, there's only been a few bands who still, I mean, are there any modern bands that rock? Is that a thing? Yeah, there are some. Uh, I'm not sure I know who they are. Like Foo yeah. Fighters? Well, yeah, see, I was thinking of the Foo Fighters, but I'm like, are they even current? Yeah, if that's a, a 20-year-old reference anymore. Yeah, I think they're beloved. Yeah, I, I think, think that genre still exists. Yeah. Uh, loud rock, and I don't think they get airplay. Yeah. They take up a lot of space in the public consciousness. You know what I would fucking love? A, a new Billy Joel song that rocks that had a saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. Yeah, take it back. What a goddamn set. Just be fucking Billy Joel. And now that he realizes, oh, I think people like me, I could probably do a few things. Yeah, man. And Although he'll probably there's... do. I bet he will do like duets. He'll want to do the bridge too. Yeah. 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 He talked about, he was asked about if, if he'd ever thought about doing a super group. And I guess he has toyed around with the idea. Like uh, it, Don Henley, who was it? Yes, Don Henley, and then he named a few other people, and he said, "And we would go out until we hated each other." <laughs> Great. All right, this but this is a slow song, but it's not too slow. Nope. I like this song. Well, so my first just simple thing to say is I do like it. I'm very pleased it exists. It doesn't feel like a mistake. It doesn't feel like, ah, shit, I think I got to try to like this because I think he's dying. It doesn't feel like that. But nope. This feels like a nice little anomaly. Yeah. Um, and his voice sounds good. It does. I think there might be some studio tricks. I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe a little auto-tuned in some places, but also in some places it's good and gravelly. I was going to say that, too. It does feel a little... um. Un, a little unplugged, a little bit. A little bit, yeah, little ironically. Bit. Like, yeah. both yeah. auto-tuned and unplugged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, since, man, since it's the new one, since you picked it, why don't you start? And by the way, just to say it out first, sure. very nice shape to the lyrics. Lovely lyric shape. Yep. Classic. Yeah. All right, please open the door. Nothing is different. We've been here before. Pacing these halls, trying to talk over the silence. And pride sticks out its tongue, laughs at the portrait that we've become. Stuck in a frame, unable to change. I was wrong. Not something he would ever have said. I absolutely, that was the first thing I thought. I was like, oh. There's an older fella. Yeah. Um, Please Open the Door is a great opening line for a song. Absolutely. It tells a very good, clear story of what's gone before it. Somebody's real mad. Yeah. But probably <laughs> mad. Um, I also like, and you'll see, as we keep going, you'll see more of this, that it's working on two tracks where he is definitely talking about his relationship with this woman and, oh, it's been too long since I've been nice to you. Yeah. Um, but it's also like about putting out a song after 20 years. Yeah, 100% it is. And the it lyric... Right after, please open the door. Nothing is different. We've been here before. I love that. Stuck I, in a frame, unable to change. Yeah. And more so the lines after that. <laughs> yeah. But pride sticks out its tongue, laughs at the portrait that we've become. I like that. It's really nicely done. Yeah. I don't have a single... Trying to talk over the silence is a nice image, too. Yes. Also, it doesn't have any of that lyrical uh, traffic jam that he does sometimes. <laughs> oh, I'm getting myself into a corner. I yeah. have to use weird phrasing or tonic and gin. Yeah. He like, took his time and got it right. <laughs> Trying to talk over the silence really sticks out to me because 
I think I, I'll just speak for myself and you've probably been there too, but I've been, you know, when you're at a dinner with a relationship that's just about over <laughs> Uh-huh. And you're with a nice person, and they're a nice person, but or they're not. But then, regardless, they're not here. I don't need to say that. Um, <laughs> but a- yeah. yeah, I really am. But you're there, and there's a moment you realize that oh boy, no one's talking. Yeah, oh. and you can't find anything. Yeah, and I. Well, what do I say? I got to say something. And then even worse is when you think of the one thing to just try to jumpstart the convo and it does not. No. Then it, then the silence gets worse. Yeah, the silence is. And I so I get that, like, the loudness of silence in those moments, that overwhelming, heavy, like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Because you can just hear that. Huh? In a, in a fight with your spouse and it's like it's nobody's talked for two hours yeah and it the longer it goes the harder it gets to say anything yeah you're like oh no now it's been like six hours <laughs> whatever i say has got to be pretty fucking good yeah you hear the disdain and the silence Oof. and the other thing you hear in silence i certainly have heard this before is within a silence you hear all the stuff you said before said that Oh, Man, it was great. I was right when I yelled that, but it doesn't seem great now. <laughs> Not aging well. I'm late, but I'm here right now. I I love that lyric from the very beginning of the first time I heard it. Oh. I'm late, but I'm here right now. I'm late, but look, I'm here. Though I used to be my romantic, I forgot somehow. Time can make you blind, but I see you now. As we're laying in the darkness, did I wait too long to turn the lights back on? Really good use of the title of the song. Yes. Powerful. Yeah. Good placement for it. Yeah. Um, and I like, uh, you know, we talked about how loud the silence is. And then he talks about, you know, I see you as we're laying in the darkness. Yeah. Seeing her in darkness. Um, very cool. And then it does really hit in that verse that it's about two things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And what a beautiful doll. I used to be romantic. Man, I, you know, I so I I wrote I write poetry for my wife sometimes, and it's usually pretty good. I'm actually an all right poet. But I don't know if you have this. It does get harder to pull out poetry from my brain the yeah. older I get. And it's not it's not anything other than that experience gets so repetitive, no matter what you're doing in life. Yeah. That you have to really remind yourself that however repetitive it feels every moment is actually pretty special. Like we've done, you know, 98 of these fuckers, but I like talking to you and you have <laughs> to remind yourself that, Oh, I'm talking to my friend, Alex. Yeah. And not get caught up in the, yeah, well, we're doing this thing again, <laughs> but because you make a mistake doing that. And then, then you have to, so I get it. You forget to be romantic, but you better be romantic because none of us live that long. And <laughs> it's it's a joyful thing to connect with people. Yeah. It's the there's repetition in the frame of your life. Yeah. And be curly cues inside of that. Yeah. Because you, know, you go to work every day it doesn't mean every day is the same at work. <clears throat> yeah. Hard. That was the last one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here, stuck on a hill. Also, by the way, I like just the one word to start the verse. Yeah. Please, and here, stuck on a hill, outsiders inside the home that we built, love. The cold settles in. It's been a long winter of indifference. Mm. Yeah. 
maybe you love me, maybe you don't, maybe you learn to, maybe you won't. You've had enough, but I won't give up on you. Great. Yeah. I, now, I want to say the maybe you love me, maybe you don't, maybe you'll learn to, maybe you won't. I love the way that sounds sung. Yeah. That's maybe my favorite part of the song as far as the singing is yeah. is because it's just it grew. It's a real nice little groove that and I like the lyrics, too, but I just want to take note of the fact that that phrase is nice also for the fact that that's written perfectly to be sung. Maybe you love me. Maybe you don't. Maybe you'll learn to. Maybe you won't. And it's got a very classic Billy Joel vibe to it i like that a lot you just lifted out those two lines and were asked to imagine the song i think i would imagine a rocker oh yeah yeah you know but it's it's a nice like swing yeah uh, and i uh, outsiders inside the home i love absolutely fantastic turn of phrase yeah is the waltz I wonder if it's a waltz. Oh, Again, this would be a great time to be knowledgeable about music. <laughs> well, we never promised that to anybody who listens. So we never did. We uh, only promised that you'd find out whether or not we had a colonoscopy, and then we'd talk <laughs> about Billy Joel. Well, you want to know my glucose levels? This is the place. Six six right now, by the way. You happen to bring that up. I'm at a six six. Nice. Is that good? It is so bad. Oh no. Wait, is that uh, your A1C? Yeah, that's my A1C. Okay. Ooh, sorry, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a new 20 minute chunk about being diabetic that's actually really funny. And I'm like, I guess it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, or you know, you made the most of it. Yep. Maybe. You were going to be diabetic anyway. There was no guarantee you were going to be funny. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, well, you're kind to say that. Thank you. Maybe you love me. Maybe you don't. Maybe you'll learn to. Maybe you won't. Wow. I just like that. Yeah. I'm late, but I'm here right now. And I'm trying to find the magic that we lost somehow. Great. Yeah. It's actually such a nice progression from just to back up, I'm late, but I'm here right now, though I used to be romantic. I'm late, but I'm here right now, and I'm, so I'm trying to be romantic. Right. I'm trying to solve the problem I identified earlier. Yes, great. Neat. That's a nice, again, <laughs> I'm sorry that Billy Joel doesn't say that, and I'm trying to fix this. Billy Joel doesn't say that. But this is where he is as a man. He's lived a long, pleasant life. He's had a lot. And now he's had some time to think, you know, I could do some of this better before the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm late, but I'm like hearing. The right thing of uh, having a chorus that repeats, but not having all the words the same. Yes. Thank you, God. Because otherwise, I'm just reading the chorus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great for our purposes and also for the song. And as we said, he wrote this so that we could do our podcast. So clearly he thought of that. He's like, well, Jim will have to read this. So, Do you think uh, Bruno Mars helped him with that? Because I know Bruno is a fan. True. I Moral right. moral support, for sure. He made phone calls. Right. He made phone calls. He's great on the phone. Yeah. Bruno Mars is great on the phone. Yeah, that's the thing. Is he can talk you into a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. I bet he sounds tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the magic that we lost somehow. Maybe I was blind, but I see you now. Ooh, great. As we're laying in the dark darkness, did I wait too long to turn the lights back on? That's good. Really good. I'm late, but I'm here right now. Is there still time for forgiveness? Now he's asking questions. Yeah. You tell me how. I can't read your mind. <laughs> getting a little aggressive in a Long Island way. Good. Good classic Billy Joel. But I see you now as we're laying in the darkness. Did I wait too long to turn the lights back on? I like that he's now asking questions besides did I wait too long? Um, which 
I think for me, it, it feels more like, uh, you know, he identified the problem, making an attempt. Now there's maybe some desperation <laughs> settling yeah. in. Like, oh no, I, maybe it is too late to turn the lights back on. Yeah. And well, a little bit of, a, and a little bit of gosh, self-awareness in the sense of like, Hey, you know what? Maybe the solution isn't just me talking at you. Right. Let's get a dialogue going. Yeah. What do you, what do you want me to do? I can't read your mind. But when you think about it, that doesn't feel real Billy Joel either. Yeah. Is there still time for forgiveness? That's nice. I don't, you know, I would love to go through, let's go through every song again and see how often he's asking anybody a question. Right. I'm inclined to think not very, unless it's uh, rhetorical. Yeah. No, this feels like an open, open heart, open ended, non judgmental. I can't. I mean, I can't read your mind, of course. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I just there's just nothing wrong with this song. There just isn't. It's such a nice song. It's so lovely. Yeah, I. Uh, it's. I don't know. Uh, the way I am with newer songs, unless it really hits me is I usually take a little while to warm up to a song. So I've enjoyed listening to it and really kind of appreciating it. I think I had a similar experience to you where the first time was just, think, I don't know, I'm just asking myself, do I like this? Because I also, you know, when the Beatles came out with their last album, their last song, I should say, two yeah. of them were dead and they did it all with studio trickery and everybody was excited. I was less <laughs> excited. Yeah. And I was just like, well, it's neat that it exists. But part of me was like, but this isn't the song John Lennon was writing. And that's just still sad. This is a piece of a thing that never got to be what it should have been because he was murdered. Right. And it's neat. And then you couldn't even do it a few years ago when George was still alive because for whatever reason, you couldn't get in there and finish it. So I had a feeling that was different from other from a lot of what I was hearing, which is, <clears throat> I was wrong. There was another one. Um, just, it was fine. I don't mind that it exists. Right. But I'm not going to, if I'm listening to the Beatles, that's not going to be on the list. No. And whereas this you, goes right into the the catalog. Yeah, this one I I'm like I'll for sure listen to this, it huh? Helps. It helps that it's just him. Yeah, and that he isn't well, and that it isn't like he's passed away. And here's some nonsense he recorded, and we finished the song using AI. And yeah, you know that might also be what uh, the Prince people are protecting themselves from is fucking AI garbage. Yeah, for sure. In the legacy, I don't know. But I think I think there is music. But yeah, I'm, I, I'll believe it when I hear something. And one thing that I did hear was that there was this whole album that was kind of like Purple Rain 2, where uh -huh. it was the same sort of approach and the same sort of vibe. And then part of me thinks, well, maybe that's one of those albums that if you did release it, you'd just think, uh, to imagine it release it when people like this kind of stuff, <laughs> right? Right, yeah, yeah, entirely possible. And maybe even he thought to himself, Well, this just seems like I've already done this, yeah. But also, he was notorious for recording just non stop stuff yes. and not releasing. I mean, he made a movie. I mean, when he was releasing albums all the time, it was like every six months, yeah, that's true. Was a new album, but you have you heard this story? There's a uh, he filmed he shot a film, an entire film. A film exists at least the footage by Kevin Smith filmed it. No, I did not hear that. Kevin Smith filmed this thing, and I you Kevin Smith is the right guy. I'm remembering the guy, I don't know what the film is about. But what I do know is he was very excited to film something with Prince. He went down to Paisley Studios every day. They filmed stuff. And then uh -huh. when it was done, you know, he got paid to do it. And when it was done, 
he called Prince's people. It was like, so when do we start the editing process? And their pe the people literally said, well, oh, this will never get finished. Wow. And they just. That's insane. Right? I have to pee so bad. I'm All right. Do you want to entertain? <laughs> I won't make I you. I'll close the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see the door. Yeah, yeah. You see the door closed. I'll be right back. <laughs> So Alex is going to take a break and we can see his lovely uh, door. That's a cute door in a very nice apartment in New York City. So obviously they have nice taste in decorating. That's really cool. Uh, but yeah, this Prince Alba, this Prince movie exists. Look up the Kevin Smith documentary about this. It's fascinating. First of all, it's fascinating that Prince just says a bunch of insulting things to Kevin Smith while he's at his house. I find that very amusing because, of course, he's Prince and he just could do what he wanted to do. It's funny. He's one of those guys you hear stories about and you never think, oh, that couldn't be true. Welcome back. Oh, hey, what's up? You know, just... Kevin Smith is a frequent guest on our show. Prince was? Kevin Smith. Oh, yeah. Kevin Smith. I would love to ask him about that. I wonder if he can talk about it. Since... Yeah. If this is the right person in mind. Well, I bet he can talk about it because he made a point of talking about it publicly in a thing. <laughs> so I bet you could ask him questions. One thing I, I was just saying this to the folks listening. I want to just repeat it. Prince is one of those guys that, you know, people tell you crazy stories about a celebrity and you go, that's not true. Yeah. You hear a crazy story about Prince and you never say that's not true. Right. You always go, oh, that's probably true. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because once you realize that the legend of him being really good at basketball is true, all bets are off. He could be anything. Yeah. Could be anything. What a You're, magical person. Yeah. What a yeah, the del delightful man and the shame we don't have him here anymore to do stuff. That just sucks. That does suck. Yeah, I, I love this song. Oh. So, huh? Still have Billy Joel. We still have Billy Joel, man. He will. I hope. I hope he makes it to a hundred, if he wants to. Um, I want to just point out that we didn't quite finish the lyrics, although it's all repetition there. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's go back. I thought we did. I've got. I'm here right now. Yes, I'm here right now. Oh, okay. I'm on BillyJoel.com and it ends with the forgiveness chunk. Oh, really? Oh, weird. Yeah. This must be the the quiet fade out stuff. Yeah, yeah, probably. It's not necessarily more, but it's just how you hear it. You get to hear the song. <laughs> but it was, how excited what were you, by the way, when you heard the thing even existed? You're like, what? Oh, yeah. I would... It, Took a while to get excited because I was just so shocked. Yeah. What? Why? Why does he do that? <laughs> what is he doing? Whoa. 56. It's obviously it's one of those electronic signs that tell you how fast you're going. Right. Well, and above is it is the that. sign that tells you how fast you should be going. Right. This, so this is, you're going too fast. You're speeding because you're uh, some kind of big shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you're going a little too fast. Slow down, you crazy child. That's it, Vienna. You did it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep, you nailed it second time. And the first one was a joke guess anyway. So that's perfect. We made good time. Man, nice job. I will tell you that I did not find a trivia question, but I did hear some trivia uh, from an interview with Billy Joel this week. Maybe I did see that, Colbert. Did you hear this trivia? That uh, Speaking of Big Shot, he, oh no, it was on Howard Stern. He was asked, you wrote that about Bianca Jagger, right? And he said, yeah. And Howard was like, so you were out with her one night and she was acting like a dick. 
And he's like, yeah, but I, it's not me singing it to her. It's it's Mick. He's like, that's why it sounds like that. That's why I'm singing like that. I'm being Mick. <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, but it, that never occurred to me. Me neither. And it makes so much sense. Like perfect sense if you again listen to it. He is doing a bad Mick Jagger impression. Uh singing to Bianca. I'm like, oh, that's so great. It completes the little circle. Yeah. We were nibbling around the edges of that knowledge. And then it was like, oh no, yeah, I'm singing to her, but I'm Mick. <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah. It's much more sense. I that, did. I saw that interview as well. I think I watched that as well this week. Yeah. Can I say something about Howard Stern real quick? I just want to say something about Howard Stern. Really? He's gone too fucking far the other way. So yeah. the beginning of his career, his thing was like, hey, I'm going to invite somebody on and embarrass them about their sexuality. Sure. I'm going to have a guest on who's a perfectly nice person and I'm going to sandbag them. <laughs> right. I'm going to have a prostitute on, but I'm not going to treat her with dignity. This is just going to be some fucking clown show. Right. So he did that a lot and people loved that. And fine. You can love that. I don't have a problem that that exists. That's life. It's fine. It was never my cup of tea, but I never hated him for it. I just was like, well, this isn't great as far as I'm concerned, but whatever. Yeah. You know, you bring on a lady and go, hey, these girls want to make out and it's all that shit. But now he's gone the other way where no matter who's on the show, he fucking has, you know, Dana Carvey on and he goes, well, when you were on this, you know, you were brilliant, right? How's that a question? <laughs> Uh, yeah and you just you would just think of these brilliant ideas right <laughs> fuck you fuck yeah. there's a middle ground here yeah he really has he's really a booster now for whoever's on I uh, like Billy Joel too but you don't need to spend the whole time in. you know when you wrote this song you know you probably you probably you know for you this was a nothing you know you just you just did it because you just, oh, that's actually a pretty good modern hour date. How it's turned impression. <laughs> yeah, really good. So, so you, you know, you were, you, uh, you wrote this song because, because you had this inspiration and all these other guys, they don't know. Oh, <laughs> Howard, fucking ask a question. Oh, ask a question. I will, here's what I'll say it's great how much he knows about the guests every time. I think he's great at that. He's never caught off guard. He always oh. is well researched. Is it? And because those interviews are super long. Yeah, that's not easy to pull off. Um, and I think I'm trying to remember when Seth was on. Seth was on Howard Stern a few months ago, and I feel like he gave him a little shit, but it was ninety percent like. So your talk show is the best one. <laughs> How did you make that happen? Where you had the best talk show? <laughs> a lot of that. But then it was also like, you know, you do jokes about your wife on the air. She gets mad, right? So I was like, oh, yeah, good. I'll do a little of that. But yeah, I agree. Not quite enough of that. But even that is a friendly version of that. It's friendly, yeah, it's a yeah. friendly uh, ribbing. It's nothing that like Colbert wouldn't do. <laughs> Yeah, Letterman never did that. Letterman never softened it that much. No, no. And Which is way more acerbic. This is why we loved him all the way, the whole time. That's a chunk of media that, and it's rewatchable. Yep. The only thing that's not rewatchable, I find this very jarring, and it's just because of the way that society's changed in a good way. Well, this is also true of Carson, and it's true of uh, Leno. Leno is any of the just hyper sexist horseshit. Yeah, Conan was really bad that way. Yeah, just oh, look at your boobies. Yeah, <laughs> oh, 
Oh no. Yeah. So uh, that's the my favorite thing about my host now is that he never does anything like that. That's great. He's flirty sometimes with ladies, but it's never like your body is good. <laughs> Always just like joking around really well, talking in a weird voice. Yeah. This gets really high when he likes a lady. But Being charming. Never, never inappropriate. Yeah. Treating but, them like a person. Imagine. Uh, the great Dolly Parton. I love, there's this great interview with Barbara Walters that really exposes what a monster Barbara Walters was. Oh, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. I fucking bet you do, where she just, first of all, why do you got to dress like that? Yeah. And what's the deal with your husband? Well, I need some freedom. Well, then why be married? Why not be married? And, of course, yeah. S has been pointed out and was worth saying again, Dolly Parton doesn't have four ex-husbands. Right. And she's still alive. She's got one current husband, and then they're going to do it the whole way. Yeah, man. Uh, suck it, Jolene. Yeah, just fascinating. It's good that a lot of that has gone away. There's the, like, like you said, hey, you know, you're in this movie. Your, your tits are in this movie, too. Ooh. Oh, boy. I mean, yeah. they are, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather talk about the script. Yeah. I did something, so the reason I know that we doubled up on surprises uh -huh. is because I went and did some research to make sure I could pick a song because I was like, well, let me make sure I don't we don't repeat a song. And then I was just very amused to see, ah, there we go. This is the one I just published today. So how far apart were they? Very far. Okay. 30s. So we recorded it well over a year and a half ago or whatever. <laughs> oh, shit. But uh, 99. And then I saw flowers in there. I was like, oh, yeah. And then that one time I just wanted to talk about Miley Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> Which I stand by. Grammy winning song. Yeah. Flowers took it home. Yep. Saw it. Wacky performance. Yeah. I love the fact that she's such a fangirl still. Yeah. That she gets up there and she just can't believe that she's standing next to one of her idols and she fangirls out. That's great. She's a cuckoo bird. That's why, yeah, she's what, what would you say, a mensch? Do you say that about ladies? Oh, I don't know. What's the equivalent? Just, but fundamentally, whatever she is, she's just a, a good, genuine person. Yeah. Just uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, number 99. 99. Everybody has a dream. Uh, we love it. Yep. And the we haven't done it. LP. Huh? And the Stranger, yeah? That's right. Okay. Good guess. my Well, not even a guess. You knew. It wasn't a guess. I think, I think it was originally written for Cold Spring Harbor. Oh, I didn't know that. Not make the album. Maybe Piano Man, but it was written for a different album and didn't get on. You, my friend, just burned a trivia question. Back to the fucking trivia minds. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, listen, this fucking podcast could go on forever because who knows how many more songs he's going to do. Right? He's just got to get them out pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get them on. Get them out what, during the weeks when... You or I are at the doctor. Yeah. I was trying to make it happen again. Yeah. 